So without further delay, I'd like to introduce uh, Tyler Wood, our first speaker, who is Director of ESG and Sustainability with Gravitas Infin Infinitum, an impact holding company focused on solving the planet's most challenging problems, including, including eliminating municipal solid waste, landfills, plastics, and CO2 emissions. Tyler, take it away. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate all you're doing in the sustainability space. And thank you, Peter, for putting this event on. It's pretty exciting to uh, be able to speak with all these, uh, you know, sustainability thought leaders and, um, you know, entrepreneurs. So look forward to future collaboration as we, uh, as we clean up this planet. Um, it's the only one we have, so let's do it. Um, as Tim was saying, um, I'm the director of ESG and sustainability with Gravitas Infinitum. And um, yeah, we are trying to solve the Earth's most challenging problems. Um, we have three um, uh, initiatives, and I'll go over them because we are a holding company. We have a lot of different things going on. But uh, T4L is Transportation for Life. I'll kick off with that. Um, that's an electric vehicle subscription company. We're working with Tesla, um, Porsche, um, uh, Nissan, Lucid, Ford, and GM and more on deck. Essentially, we're just making electric vehicles, uh, uh, our ability to access electric vehicles uh, quicker and cheaper uh, through a subscription service. And so we are pretty, I mean, that I affectionately call that one our baby unicorn because it's growing so fast and it's uh, targeted for an IPO later this year or the beginning of next. Um, and um, that just allows people to uh, subscribe their electric vehicle um, everything's included, even the charging, um, pretty much everything around the car, the, co the use of the car, the cost of ownership is all wrapped into the subscription price. Um, the other initiative is a nonprofit that we have um, called the Hot Planet Repair Team. That's an excellent group of just amazing people um, that are all, it's volunteer led. Um, we're all trying to untrash the planet and we're growing a, a, a group of volunteers around the world uh, to help do that. Um, I'll spend a good portion of my time explaining the, uh, what we've been working on for the last several years, uh, Carbatura. Carbatura means carbon capture in Latin. Um, uh, so we have two initiatives within, two divisions within uh, Carbatura. One is uh, zero fill, and that's the elimination of municipal solid waste. Um, and also landfill mining and elimination of landfills, uh, allowing landfills to actually last longer or eliminating them in general. Uh, it's basically a virtual landfill. And the other is biocarbon. And that's uh, the equivalent of, it's, it's an indoor uh, vertical farm, but it's the equivalent of 25,000 acres uh, in a five acre footprint. And that runs like a data center. And it's the most efficient carbon capture on the planet. And we, we create uh, renewable fuels and uh, advanced nanobiomaterials that essentially we'll need for uh, the raw materials for the next stage of civilization. Um, I'll focus in on our zero fill because zero fill is really exciting because uh, municipal solid waste typically is about 20 to 50 percent of a municipal budget and they're running out of space. Landfills are closing. No one wants another landfill in their backyard. They're trying to figure out how to extend the life of landfills. Um, and it's, it's expensive. Um, you know, the cost per ton just in the United States is, you know, 50, on average, say $50 a ton just to keep, uh, you know, trash in the, in the landfill. Um, the zero fill is pretty innovative because um, you don't need to do all the separations of the plastics, the tires, trash, and biomass. All of that can be eliminated um, simultaneously through uh, our process. Um, the exciting part about it is that we don't take technology risk in that. Um, so when we're working with municipalities or people that manage municipal waste or landfills, and we're in discussions with our working team you know, around the world, um, uh, with this. So there's a lot of identified um, locations uh, currently. Um, but I mean, these are pretty expensive um, remediation efforts. And a lot of municipalities and people just don't have the capex to, to do that. 
um, or the 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 funds to to pay for such a you know endeavor. And these are you know 200, 400 million dollar type of um, um, infrastructure needs. And so uh, zero fill can take anywhere from 500 to two to 10,000 tons per day of municipal solid waste. Um, and as long as we get a, a, a guarantee uh, that we can get that over a, a long term contract, um, we provide all of the funding and all of the operations and all of the sales of all of the recycled materials. And we're talking 100% recycling. So as we all know, being kind of sustainability professionals, there's a, you know, 8.6% of the world economy is circular. <laughs> uh, so there's a big circularity gap to fill. And a lot of that is the $2 billion of municipal solid waste that's created every year. Um, and so that's the base infrastructure that's necessary for us to um, address the waste streams that we've already produced that are piling up everywhere, as well as the waste streams that we'll continue to produce. So it basically puts the trash can into the circular economy and all of our trash cans that we've collectively accumulated around the world. So um, that's an exciting um, uh, prospect. Um, we have financial partners that provide 100% of the financing for us, as long as we have a long-term commitment uh, with the waste holders um, to be able to provide that every day for a long period of time. We share 20% um, of that, uh, of those revenues with uh, the municipality. So that's a really exciting transition because like I said, that was 20 to 50% of their municipal budgets. Now it turns into a revenue stream and that's a, a big shift. So for instance, from the, you know, from a, uh, you know, financial standpoint, um, that's about a $400 million, you know, build out for 2000 tons per day. Not a, not a lot, but it's significant. Um, but that would provide about 80 to $90 million in annual revenues to that municipality. They could use that for ESG, um, SDG initiatives. Um, it's a multi-generational revenue stream. So um, that's just a, kind of a game changer. Um, I don't know what, you wouldn't call that a, a baby unicorn that, and because it's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's almost a whole new industry. Um, and so what we're doing with that is um, identifying people that are dealing with or overwhelmed with an immediate need to eliminate municipal waste. Um, as long as they are a, uh, you know, global 5,000 company or a municipality or a country with a, you know, decent credit rating, you know, we can work with you. And, um, and so that's kind of the, um, the, um, the zero fill, uh, as far as building onto that, you know, a lot of countries have these initiatives of capturing carbon and carbon neutrality and their, and their national determined, uh, contributions, um, of carbon, um, our biocarbon facilities can bolt on to these zero fill facilities and capture, you know, megatons of carbon. And the raw materials that are coming out are bio are carbon negative. So we're talking activated carbon, we're talking um, graphite, we're talking graphene and even diamonds. So it's a, it's a whole nother uh, um, environment when you're working at the nano level. And that's what we see ourselves are. We initially were more of a, a, a nanomaterial uh, company. And we realized what we were walking into was we we're really solving one of the biggest challenges of this sustainability movement is dealing with our, our waste streams. And once we effectively deal with our waste streams, then we can start really dealing with additional um, you know, opportunities to pull down atmospheric carbon. Um, and you know, from the standpoint of graphite, that's an exciting um, material. Uh, there's on average 220 pounds of graphite in every electric vehicle. And the United States produces zero graphite. <laughs> so it's a critical mineral for this decarbonization and electrification trend. Um, and we see ourselves uh, with advanced processes to be able to create that both renewable graphite um, and bio negative, um, uh, carbon negative biographite. So, um, and that's, uh, that's in summary where I'd like to wrap up. I guess I've hit my 
hit my time frame. But uh, you know, thanks for letting me uh, participate and communicate with everybody. Hey Tyler, thanks for that. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about. Um, well, be before I ask my question, maybe be good if um, if anybody in the audience has a question for Tyler to put that in the chat or in the Q and A to make sure that to get your question asked. Uh, in the meantime, I'm, uh, before while we're waiting for questions to come in, um, I'd be interested to know more about the zero fill um, logistically, how that works. I mean, you mentioned a system. Um, is it a modular system? To I mean, different municipalities, different uh, entities are going to have different amount, amount of waste for you to process. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. It is uh, it is modular. Um, basically, we start at around, you know, 500 tons a day, but essentially it can it can scale up. Uh, we, um, it doesn't take up a lot of space, say a 2000 ton per day um, uh, facility would take up about three acres or a 200 by 200 foot um, facility. We'd like to keep it covered and, and protect our machinery, but it can be outside as well. Um, but uh, we'd like to keep them at close proximity to landfills or anywhere there's choke points of waste. Um, and so, um, like for instance, in New York and Long Island, there's a landfill that's closing in 2025. And then, you know, they're being forced to figure out what to do with all this waste. And no one wants trains full of trash going through their neighborhood to upstate New York. So there's, you know, big issues, not only in New York, but around the country, around the world. Um, and um, so logistically, as long as we are co-located, um, you know, relatively near um, municipal waste or landfills, uh, we can pretty much get to work. Great. And we have a question that just came in um, asking what types of feedstocks can you accept? Maybe another question to add on to that would be um, what can you not accept? What, what would not go through your process? Pretty much, you know, everything, um, you know, hazardous uh, um, plastics, tires, not so good with, um, you know, radioactive isotopes. So we kind of stay clear of radioactive material, um, but everything else um, is fine. And um, if there's any kind of serious or large amounts of like biomass waste streams, we can create a separate line of production uh, for uh, that biomass to be processed through a separate line, because that's typically if it's a singular source of biomass, uh, the the materials produced off of that are are uh, are quite good for you know activated carbon and and creating uh, advanced materials from that as well biochar so a few other questions have come in um are all of your systems patented by by um you or uh, maybe you could talk about um, it? sure um we work with uh several vendors that have uh patent patented technologies but uh, we work with uh, trade secrets. It's much easier to work with trade secrets. It's easier than waving a flag and telling everyone not to wave a flag, you know, copy your flag. Uh, we work with trade secrets and uh, the trade secret uh, protections are, are quite strong. Great. And so another question, uh, how do the economics of this uh, work? Um, do you sell a byproduct or a carbon trading product uh, on the back end? Uh, yeah, there are carbon uh, attributes, carbon credit attributes. Um, we look at those, uh, but we really more focused on the actual materials. Um, I think the, um, uh, you know, synthesis gas, monomers, polymers, um, renewable fuels, and activated carbon being the primary outputs in, in addition to water um, is another output. Um, so that's actually a um, couple of the exciting areas. And then from the activated carbon standpoint, I don't know if many people know, but it's a critical element for air and water filtration and other uh, industrial processes. Um, and there are advanced processes that can be done to activated carbon um, graphitization. Um, and graphite is going to be a critical mineral uh, for pretty much everything in the future, <laughs> especially when it comes to graph uh, graphene and other you know, nanomaterials. Who's responsible for the transportation of the waste? Or are you handling and handling the recovery of it? Um, 
Well, it can, we don't take any tipping fees. So we're not charging any municipality or waste management company to uh, drop uh, uh, their, you know, tip, the tipping fee on the front end. Uh, we share our profits uh, annually or quarterly on the back end. So um, it's quite a different animal from how the world deals with waste right now. <laughs> zero cost, zero emissions, and, uh, you know, uh, zero uh, sorting and, and, and no tipping for the municipalities. Uh, we have a question, I think, related to your the holding company. Are, are you looking to invest in Canada? Uh, and how about regenerative agriculture as, a, as a, uh, an area of uh, investment? Sure. Um, well, our biocarbon facility, um, that can bolt on to our zero fill uh, facilities. Uh, like I said, that's the equivalent of 25,000 acres of agric outdoor agricultural growing in a five-acre footprint. Um, so we like to focus on uh, hemp, uh, but we can also focus on food, uh, other areas. But, um, you know, we're all in a train right now and we're going to hit a wall soon. And there's a big difference of hitting a wall at 35 miles an hour and 135 miles an hour trying to slow it down. So ultimately, these facilities that can capture carbon and create nanobiomaterials can also support life uh, with being able to grow food um, extremely efficiently. We have a question around uh, the, the emissions associated with the process. Um, and what can you tell us about, also, what can you tell us about energy per tons consumed? Well, we're self-powered um, by the materials that we produce, um, and there are no emissions. Uh, we actually use the flue gases off the uh, turbines uh, through another process that creates oxygen and um, more activated carbon. Uh, so we are self-powered and um, um, you know and zero emissions our biocarbon is facilities are negative emissions so thank you tyler i think that's uh, all we have time for for questions today really uh thank you for your interesting talk and all the things you're doing for for the planet